Yeah, 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 yeah. Lil Brunson back at you with the back at you, and I am the best reporting on the Eagles. Listen, man, shout out to Luke Mogul. You know what I mean? We got something going on. Uh, play live with Lil Brunson, Saturday, 7 p.m. You know what I'm saying? BDLB squared. The link is going to be in the description. You already know. Make sure you follow me on IG too, man, at Lord underscore Brunson. Same at on Twitter, at Lord underscore Brunson. So you can stay hip and current to all the news and everything that's going on as far as, you know, just the brand and just content in general. Listen, man, you already know. I told y'all we got something brewing coming down the pipe with the print champs. Shout out to my guys as well. Shout out to Flick Chat. Shout out, man, just shout out to the whole team, man. Shout out to everybody that's supporting us, keeping this thing moving and going on. I'm answering a lot of y'all questions. I'm getting a lot of questions on Twitter and my DM. Is this a real size helmet? Yes, it is. This is a real size helmet. I don't know why it looks like that from far away, but it is what it is. Listen, man. Let's talk a little bit. Let's talk some sixes, man. I am the best reporting on the Eagles with a splash of sixes, man. You know, I've been tuning into my boys. They've been doing a thing, man. And you know, you know, at times, at times the team looks soft. Now, let me let me get this right. Let me get this. You know, let me let me let me get this in a way so everybody can understand it. When I say the team looks soft, it's just that I expect more out of this team. This is not a rebuilding team. This is a team that's looking for a championship. So what I expect from a team that's looking for a championship is for my team to go out there and just blow certain people out. You know what I'm saying? We're not supposed to be down 14, 16, coming back and winning by eight. No, we're supposed to be going out there and blowing people out and asserting that dominance from the first quarter. You know what I'm saying? I see I see a lot of the dominance when our back's against the wall, which is good. The team got some fight that lets me know that we're not entitled. You know what I'm saying? But our stars are giving us exactly what they're supposed to give us. Ben Simmons, for instance, is playing shutdown defense. You know... You, you got you got to understand this about Ben Simmons. Ben Simmons is a point guard. Ben Simmons is basically a walking triple double, and Ben Simmons is a great defender. I wouldn't change Ben Simmons for the world. Yeah, I think he needs to at least attempt some threes, some open ones. But Ben Simmons, in a sense, is is Rajon Rondo in a bigger body. Yes, the two-time world champion Rajon Rondo in a bigger body. You can't ask for nothing more than that. Cause that listen, that skill set that Ben Simmons has wins championships. Point blank. Period. That skill set wins championships. And Ben Simmons is, is, is shutting down the best team scorer night in and night out in the beginning of this very young season. I want to point that out. This is the beginning of this season. And the Philadelphia 76ers are definitely um, looking like a top 10 team. Um, it's too early to call them top five, but, you know, they're probably top five in a lot of people's eyes. And Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid are a huge reason for that. Joel Embiid is putting up some of the best numbers in the first few games of a season since Charles Barkley. You know what I mean? This this isn't a coincidence. These are two cornerstone pieces coming together and doing their job, period. And I like what I'm seeing out of the team. I like what I'm seeing out of the franchise. Seth Curry and Danny Green were two key acquisitions. Now, you're not going to... Now, Seth, Seth been balling. Seth, in my opinion, Seth is is doing his thing as well and looking like a, you know, um, most improved candidate already in this very young part of the season. Looking like a most improved candidate. And I think that he's going to finish in the top five. Um, he's starting. The shots are there for him. Off the dribble, he, it's there. He's a, he's an underrated passer, underrated dribbler. I mean, Seth, I think Seth is going to show out this season. He's been doing it. I think he's had um, games of 15 and 17 already, and that's what we need. Already he seems to be more effective than um, than Richardson was for us last year, but, you know, Richardson also played with a lot of heart as well. So, But Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid are what they're supposed to be. When Ben Simmons is shutting down the best guy, he held Westbrook to a funky shoot night. He held R.J. Barrett to a funky shoot night. I can't remember who was the, the, the other guy, but, you know, it's, it's, it's up here. But, you know what I'm saying? He's holding people down and he's doing what he's supposed to do. Nobody's going to just come out there and bake him. You know what I'm saying? He's proven that. You're going to have to be an elite scorer, the best of the best, to come out there and think you're going to do whatever you want to do to ben, when Ben Simmons is on the floor. And I commend him for that. Joel Embiid is, Joel Embiid is playing like he wants to win MVP. Now, my only concern with the team is this, that, you know, Tobias Harris is actually paid to do what Seth Curry is doing. Seth Curry is being that strong third fiddle. I would like to see Tobias Harris averaging a strong 15 and, and 7, and I think you got a championship team. 
If Tobias Harris for the rest of the season can average 15 and 7, and you can get 15 and 5 from Seth Curry with Ben and Joel doing what they're doing already, and Danny Green hitting those key open shots, you got yourself a championship team. Um, I would like to see more fight in the team. Other than that, I think the team is good to go. I don't think I don't think we've been put out in the second round. I don't see that happening for us. So, you know, I'm ecstatic and I'm excited about that. Now, let's get into some Eagles news, some NFC East news. Listen, Eagles Nation, I want you to understand something. This is very key and this is very important, Eagles Nation. We don't have to listen to anybody talking trash who don't control their own destiny. You hear me? A lot of these teams don't control their own destiny who want to make it to the playoffs. The Giants and the Cowboys don't control their own destiny, which means what? Which means they didn't take care of their business. They didn't finish their food in the regular season, just like us. Just like us. Now, do I want to beat the Washington football team? Who cares at this point? It's not going to send us to the playoffs. That's just keeping it real. You know what I'm saying? Are we going to beat them? I don't think we're good enough to beat them anyway. I don't think we got enough to beat him anyway. The defense is coming to his own. Alex Smith is out there now, not Dwayne Haskins. Our secondary and our defense is trash, with the exception of Darius Slay, who's quietly, Darius Slay should have been a pro bowler. But the record is the reason why not. Darius Slay is, I mean, dude's averaging 50 yards on Darius Slay or something like that, something ridiculous. When you pull up the stats and what the Dallas Cowboys wide receivers did lined up against Darius Slay, he held dudes in check. But this is the thing. There's one Darius Slay, and the Dallas Cowboys got three wide receivers that are actually really good. You can't put Darius Slay everywhere at one time. It just don't work like that. Other guys got to step up. Other guys got to step up. And, you you, you know, we, we, we just can't pay attention to nobody who don't control their own destiny. The Cowboys and the Giants can talk from the highest mountain that they feel like they own all that they want. But they need us to beat the Giants. But they need, they need us to beat the Redskins for them to even, you know, think that they're going somewhere. Period. They need us to win a game to help them. They don't control their own destiny. All this riffing and bickering that's going on between Dallas Cowboys fans and Giants fans because they play head-to-head, -head, you still need the Eagles to win. If Washington win, ain't it over for everybody? So I just don't get it. I just don't understand it. You know what I mean? And 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 everybody's hitting me up about Jamar Chase, Devontae Smith, uh, 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 this guy, that guy. Listen, right now we're sixth. There is a lot of people that need uh, that need the services of a wide receiver. You know what I mean? Listen, the Bengals are about done with A.J. Green. That's apparent. The Bengals picked before us, which is also apparent. Do you think the Beagles gonna you think the Bengals gonna let Jamar Chase go by? No. First of all, do you think the Philadelphia Eagles are even gonna take the best player on the board? Since when? Since when can you put your faith in this team to say that we're gonna do that? Can you really put your faith in this in this team to say that we're going to do something like that? Like we're going to take the best available talent no matter what? No. We're not built like that. We don't think like that. And this is the kicker, which you guys keep forgetting. We just drafted three wide receivers. If we pick a wide receiver in the first round, which I believe we probably need, but if we pick a wide receiver in the first round, it's an indictment on the development it's an indictment on the wide receiver coach. If you pick a wide receiver in the first round again this year, fire Aaron Moorhead while you at it. Get rid of your wide receiver coach because he didn't develop the three guys that he... Yeah, yeah. You're telling him that he didn't do his job. He didn't develop nobody. You still need wide receivers. Or maybe we just keep picking the wrong wide receivers. I'm not pleased with the Rager. I'm not pleased with Rager. The pick made sense because you needed a wide receiver, but I'm not pleased with him. I'm not pleased with his play on the field. Then you got Ortega Whiteside, who who in um Doyle, Doyle Green Beckham got more action and more stats that are better than uh Ortega Whiteside's in one year than Ortega Whiteside got in two years. It's a fail. Period. The Ortega Whiteside experiment is over. Same way it was over for Matt Collins. So I don't trust this team to go out there and get a wide receiver. Um if they do, it's gonna be some off-brand dude. That's just what we do, and we, you know, it's not, it's not looking good for us in the draft or in the off-season. So, let me know what you think in the comments.